upland habitats. Being able to identify and understand the differences between upland habitats is really important when considering the impacts of management practices such as burning and grazing and how this affects biodiversity, water quality, natural flood management and the massive stores of carbon that are locked up in our peatland soils. We often talk about heather moorland, but there are actually three distinct upland habitat types in which ling heather, Coluna vulgaris, plays a prominent part. These are dry heath, wet heath and blanket bog. Dry heath is found on free-draining mineral soils and is most common in the drier east of Scotland. Bell heather, with its larger, deeper purple flowers, is a good indicator of dry heath, particularly at lower altitudes and in the milder west. Below about 600 metres, dry heath is found in areas that would once have been forest and is maintained by grazing and burning. Burning is permitted on dry heath under the Muirburn Code, provided sensitive areas are avoided. Wet heath is abundant in the west of Scotland and is found on waterlogged ground which may support peat up to 50 centimetres deep. Cross-leaved heath, a close relative of bell heather, but with pale pink flowers, is common on wet heath. Other plants that can dominate wet heath include Malinia or purple moorgrass and bog myrtle, a small shrub with aromatic leaves. Although burning of wet heath is not prohibited by the Muirburn Code, heather regrowth is slow in the wet conditions and burning can lead to dominance by millennia. Where the peat depth exceeds 50 centimetres, the habitat changes to blanket bog, where the vegetation is entirely rain-fed, losing any influence of nutrients from the groundwater. Even so, it can sometimes be difficult to distinguish from wet heath in the west of Scotland, as many of the dominant plant species are the same, including sphagnum moss, although it's often more abundant on blanket bog. Hare's tail cotton grass, with its single white flower, is probably the most reliable indicator of deep peat, and therefore the presence of blanket bog. Another way of checking is to probe the peat depth with a cane or pole. If it goes in more than 50 centimetres, you're on a bog rather than a heath. In the drier east of Scotland, the waterlogged conditions that cause peat to form are mainly found on the flatter hilltops above 400 metres. The blanket bogs here are dominated by ling heather, hare's tail cotton grass and sphagnum moss, with few of the other species found in the west. There are some other distinctive species on these eastern blanket bogs though, including cloudberry, a tiny relative of the raspberry with pale orange fruit. Even when it isn't flowering, the wiry tussocks of the cotton grass give the bogs a distinctive grassy appearance which easily distinguishes them from the dry heath that they usually adjoin. Throughout Scotland, a distinctive feature of blanket bogs is the clusters of small pools and lochens that form on flatter areas, providing a habitat for insects and other wildlife. Blanket bogs are more sensitive to trampling and burning than other upland habitats, and burning on peat deeper than 50 centimetres is prohibited under the Muirburn Code, except as part of an approved restoration plan where peat drying has caused heather to become overdominant. Historical burning and overstocking with deer and sheep means that many of our bogs now suffer from erosion. Erosion gullies reveal the depth of the peat over the mineral substrate, in this case two or three metres. But the exposed peat also dries out and the carbon it stores is eventually lost to the atmosphere through oxidation and by being washed downstream where it decomposes. Peatland restoration efforts aim to reprofile and revegetate these eroding faces, halting the loss of peat and restoring a functioning bog that continues to store carbon through new peat formation. If you want to learn more about upland habitats and peatland conservation, visit the Farm Advisory Service website and search for peatland. You might also like to visit the NatureScot website and search for peatland action to learn more about restoration.